Hi, this is Ken McCarthy of Jazz on the Tube, and anybody who's been a regular listener, viewer, follower of Jazz on the Tube knows that we love New Orleans. And every chance we get, we want to remind people what a great place it is, uh, how important it is to visit. And today we have a book that we're going to talk about. It's called New Atlantis, Musicians' Battle for the Survival of New Orleans by John Swenson. And I just want to start this whole process off by saying, get the book. Make no mistake, it was the the musicians of New Orleans coming back, going through unbelievable hardships to to relight the uh, the, the, the spark of New Orleans that got that city back on its feet. I mean, obviously a lot of people contributed, but the, the musicians' contribution was essential. So let's welcome our, our distinguished guest, John Swanson. Ken, thank you very much for the uh, wonderful endorsement of the book, and by extension, the great comments you made about all of these magnificent human beings who uh, help bring New Orleans back through the force of their culture. We're talking about the difference between New York and New Orleans. New York and most places uh, are, when you talk about culture and music, uh, people pay money to go and sit in a chair and watch a performance. Music is part of everyday life in New Orleans. It's a very different set of circumstances. The music is more in the streets there. Uh, It's as much in the streets as it is in the clubs. And it's as much, I I don't know if you could say it for free, because there are all different ways to talk about that, but it accompanies birth and it accompanies death and it accompanies everything in between. And uh, that that is... uh, the function that music serves there, and the musicians under the musicians were forced to leave the city like everyone else, and they were often offered very good terms to reside in places like Portland, Oregon, and Austin, Texas, and and New Brooklyn, New York. Uh, but when they got there and started playing there, they realized that their music didn't have the context in the community that that it enjoyed in New Orleans. The music didn't have the meaning that it has in New Orleans. So they had to go back to New Orleans to reestablish their culture in order to give themselves a context to allow their music to be as spiritually advanced as it is there. It's not entertainment. And a lot of people before the storm, before the flood, thought of it as entertainment and songs like do you know what it means to miss new orleans and and saint james infirmary uh were considered oh these old songs that uh, everybody did well when these musicians came back when james andrews came back after immediately after the storm that's a trombone shorty's older brother and glenn david andrews's cousin his performance of those songs, which had been entertaining before, brought he brought real new meaning to them. And you could see they had new meaning for him and for all of the musicians who played them. So I, I think that in the in the the point of this book is is that these musicians reestablished the culture, uh, uh, the unique culture of New Orleans through their music. And if you look at the another large point, I mean, uh, the United States is changing in, in character, uh, becoming less of a manufacturing base and more of a, a place where software is produced and ideas are created uh, and, and uh, intellectual properties are created. And, well, this is what is driving the recovery of New Orleans in terms of culture. It's It's a you know, the intellectual property of the musicians. And uh, I think it's it's a kind of canary in the coal mine for the entire country. Yeah, I think so. I think for musical culture in, in general, because what what goes on in New Orleans today is the way things used to be everywhere in the country. You know, the school band used to be a, a, a highlight. Live music used to accompany everything in the old, in other, in every everywhere, you know. I don't know if you're aware, there's a, I forget the name of the book, but there were second lines in Albany, New York at one point. There were second lines in Philadelphia. So New Orleans, in a way, is like the last 
uh, holdout, the, stre- the, the, the stronghold for America's musical culture. Because there, there's two kinds. I would say there's two kinds of people in in the jazz world: those who've been to New Orleans and those that haven't. And I, you know, I've, I've been on both sides of that. When I li- was a young guy living in New York, I really, you know, I didn't get out of New York. Frankly, literally for years, I never left the island. Brooklyn was a long trip, and. Uh, I thought New Orleans was some history, ancient history place that had nothing to do with anything. And when I got down there, I was uh, chagrined, you know, at how ignorant, how just profoundly ignorant I was that not only was New Orleans not history, New Orleans was sort of the, the, the eternal flame in some ways of America's music culture. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it, I mean, the things that have come out of New Orleans, uh, most people are familiar with the fact that, vaguely familiar with the idea that jazz got its start in New Orleans, but really so did rhythm and blues. The case can be made. Um, so did funk. Uh, the case can be made. It, it, and, it, and to a degree, the sound of Motown uh, was formed uh, largely by the drumming of a New Orleans drummer who, who visited Detroit in its early, uh, in Motown's early days, Sophie Johnson, and uh, showed uh, the people in Detroit uh, what drumming could be. And on and on it goes. The Little very, Richard. First recording oh. in New Orleans, you know. Of course, Little, Little Richard, and then and then uh, now and when the Beatles came to America, uh, of course they wanted to meet Elvis Presley. But the guy I think they were really awed by was uh, Fats Domino, and then of course you know, Louis Armstrong is a New Orleans native. Lester Young was born in Mississippi and was all over the country, but he spent his formative years right in the heart of New Orleans, and uh, you, you know you can hear it in his sound, I think, and his approach to life and his approach to music. So not only is New Orleans important for the, the, the history of, of this music, but it maintains the, the spirit of it. And uh, so I want to, you know, besides encourage people to uh, make sure they get their copy of New Atlantis, if you haven't been, if you love this music and you haven't been to New Orleans, um, you know, think about it. I'm going to tell you right now, do not go between <laughs> May and... I don't know, November, unless you're really tough. Because I've seen grown men, multi-generation cane cutters, uh, you know, who you know, now who still weep when August comes around because the weather is just so brutal. <laughs> so, and, and don't think that you've experienced hot weather until you've experienced New Orleans in the summer. You don't know what hot is. Uh, John, am I lying or what? <laughs> well, I have to. I have to take exception on one issue. I think everybody should uh, uh, visit Satchmo Summerfest at one point <laughs> in their lives because it's such a, a wonderful. The annual uh, celebration of Louis Armstrong's uh, birth date uh, is the first weekend of August, and uh, tough it out for a couple of days because the music is so uh, alive, and you know. The uh, the, fir- the earliest moments of jazz still live there. I might also point out that if you listen to Jelly Roll Morton, you're hearing the roots of everything that's happened since. I mean, you're hearing Professor Longhair, you're hearing Dr. John in there. And, uh, you know, it's just New Orleans is a place that is not cut off from the past, even though it's it's uh, certainly part of the future as well, but it's a continuum. The music is an ongoing phenomenon there, and I would like to uh, uh, endorse the uh, Satchmo Summerfest, certainly. As well. Fair enough, fair enough. But, but let's warn people, that if you, be prepared to be hotter than you've ever been in your life. Is that fair? Uh, well, yes. I would, not, I, I would <laughs> recommend against being out in the hot sun between, let's say, noon and 4 p.m. Stay out of the sun. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I, I had a friend that grew up in Brazil, and uh, when she went to New Orleans in June, she could not believe uh, how hot it was. But uh, if you're tough, and, and I think it is, it's, it's certainly worth it to go to the Sashmo Festival, do that. And then if you want, to, but if you want to be comfortable, you know, like December to through April, you know, you, you have this lovely weather. You know, forget California, um, New Orleans in in, in uh, like around March. When the you know in late February when the magnolia trees blossom, I mean, gee, you can't get much better weather than that. This is Ken McCarthy uh, for John Swenson uh, saying uh, goodbye on behalf of Jazz on the Tube. Uh, get yourself a copy of New Atlantis. <laughs>